The Great Matriarch by Musa, Part 10. For American Indians to get out of the prisoner of war classification, which cannot be done by Congress or the President, for the simple reason that they will not get rid of the autonomy type of Indian government, which gives an ambiguous identity with a quasi-sovereign position which automatically makes the Casas Omesas concept illegal. American Indian tribes must go by a matriarch system where each member knows their clan. Clan mothers chose spokesmen of chiefs for the nation. Clans are to know the women of the clan rituals, medicine rituals, firstborn rituals, and all time rituals. They may be, must be able to know which moon is the women of the clan moon and what moon is the medicine moon. What is the order of the moons and what houses rule in each period of time? What are clan rituals, equations, and formulas? If any reservation Indian can still find old Indians knowing the ancient knowledges, they will tell you that Sitting Bull and the Sovereignty Group were able to mismatch synchronized time so that the U.S. Army were meeting with Indians out of sequence in time, trying to make the 1868 treaty legal. Most of these Indians in command of this ancient knowledge will also state that the death of Sitting Bull, who had been in the Wild West shows, may have forgotten to synchronize tribal time because using the Treaty of 1868 as the beginning time, the U.S. synchronized his time for death was December 15, 1890, at 3.30 p.m. Not being present at his death, time calculated cannot be disputed by Army records. However, the Rosebud and Little Bighorn were done by ancient Indians and knowing the time of death for Sitting Bull, Bigfoot, and the group headed south, knowing the massacre would be put out of sequence in the same order of Little Bighorn, so there would be survivors to keep the issue alive. But the grandson, like his grandmother, had watched and faced death, found a way to survive against impossible odds, so he too paid his dues. But everyone will consider a marvel when he put this together on a traveling quest, will never be able to compare to the marvels of marvels of his grandmother, who knew all this and was able to pass it on. No army or interior department records can be found where she attended an institution of learning, nor could she speak the English language. Yet she knew how the death of Sitting Bull was calculated, that the slaughter of Wounded Knee, 1890, was actually to get the head clan mother, one who speaks once, that becomes a violation of international law that is hidden by claiming it was a war. This book is the results of her using an ancient tribal equation, the present minus the past, equals the future. The present was that day in the mid-1930s when she presented her grandson before the ancient elders on a ritual so all knowledges would be understood by him, minus the past, being wounded knee, 1890, equals the future, happening in the year 1991. By this book. This would let everyone know they were hearing the voice of Agnes Strykard, the great matriarch, telling what really happened at the historical event known as Wounded Knee, 1890. That this event happening to the Dakota Head clan mother is subject to the Creator's Balancing Act of April 23rd, 24th, 25th, 1547 A.D., when all legal moves have been used 
against the clan mother and the court case United States versus Consolidated Wounded Knee Cases 389 F SUPP period 235 January 17 1975 becomes the final issue by prisoners of war and the courts if Sitting Bull was murdered on a certain moon and the clan mother was done in on two phases of the moon later, then one must go by the moon. This would make it June 2nd, 1993 at 11.46 p.m., leaving the same amount left on the plumed serpent or the time cycle that was at the death of Sitting Bull and one who speaks once. The event is known to be called Hu Hen Rao because it dealt directly with sovereignty of a tribe. Its classification is precisely found in historical references of Pura Lipum ad Vitellium Quibus Astronomiae Pars Optica Traditore, 1604, page 259, Stella Nova. In Serpentario, page 113. The quest of the grandson no longer had a complex nature, but a simple one with no loose ends. The grandmother knew he would be involved with Wounded Knee 1973, and the conclusion would let him know that Wounded Knee 2000 should be left alone. Why? Because of all the tricks showing prisoner of war Indians, how to become signatory treaty Indians, was reported back to the Indian ring and whiskey ring so that congressional laws could be passed that would plug the legal loopholes that gave a small voice to signatory treaty Indians on tribal lands. Wounded Knee 2000 will not have the issues of tribal lands, but the issue of knowledge. Ancient tribal knowledges that gave the know-how to survive a global catastrophe that ends as an ice age. A scientific fact known since 1950 that was shown in 1917 that American Indians had survived all ice ages of the past as a tribal unit. It was only believed as a spiritual fact prior to these archaeology finds. The many occult, metaphysical, and religious groups will suddenly discover they put all their marbles and religious looks on the wrong type of Indian to become a surplanter to escape the coming global catastrophe. Wounded Knee 2000 will become the instrument that is to lure out the descendants who had been taught these ancient tribal knowledge to help their long-lost brothers who had been prisoners of war for around 135 years. Note, in law, casus omissus refers to the state of there being no law at all. So, as it applies to the Indians, the courts were not prepared to allow provisions when no law exists. Janice Switlow does a legal comment on it, however, again, their interpretation. And this is the completion of the reading of the Great Matriarch by Musa Meredith Quinn. Skin and Goa, great peace to all.